All right, so this is the uh, office hours, and no one's no one's needing help at the moment. So we're we're just going to start talking through some stuff we've been working on, and this will be exclusive content for you guys that are part of the office hours or the HK Heroes group. So Isaiah, so you were you were mentioning a script for a client we're working on where yeah the goal was basically correct me if I'm wrong, but it was like there was a a, a tool Zoom which has in this case a poll, and he wants to capture to easily get the results of the poll live in a meeting and right. correct me if I'm wrong here. Um, zoom allows you to do the set up a web hooks kind of thing. Is that right? A server? Yeah, to, to capture that exactly thing? is. So, yeah. so and what happens is, yeah. is a total, I was going to use a bad word, but I won't. Oh, it's private clusterfuck <laughs> of like, when you try <laughs> to learn about it, it's just, yeah, yeah. Looks, right. And there's yeah. not good documentation on it and not whatever. I'm like, I understand what it is. Yeah. But setting up a server to, and actually, you know what? This kind of came up in our discussion earlier in the live hour. Was look, we could we could have not in this case with Zoom, but I'm just saying in general. This is why they create webhooks. They don't want people like us pinging their servers over and All over. And over. Hey, is there something there? Hey, is there something there? Hey, is there right, something exactly. there? Right. What they want to do is to when something happens, they're going to send an alert out saying, "Hey, something this happened. happened. You better catch catch it." Right? right. Like, actually, they, they retry a couple times, if I remember right. Yeah, right. That's right. But w this way, we can ping our own server, so to speak. Right. We can go look at our own thing. Hey, is there something there? Yeah. But we're not exactly. pinging Zoom's servers. Exactly. So anyway, so now go ahead and start explaining the technology behind this. So what we were doing is uh, that we were using something called WebSockets. Now, WebSockets and, and uh, sockets in general is just a way to connect to computers. Socket is usually a way to open a port in your computer or open a port in which you will create a connection between two computers and one computer is gonna send data to you. Now that connection is what we call a socket. Now to create a socket, there's a lot of things that have to go on. Um, Windows takes care of that. You have a way of creating ports and web sockets with the library that they have. Uh, the Win API actually has a way of managing that. But for a socket to be up and running, there must be a port open in your computer. So there's a few steps that you have to figure out before you even start with it. So I, I just wanted to show real quick how that looks or, or what you would be using. Um, and Right now, even though the example is uh, the one that I'm going to be using is a, 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 a out of hotkey version two library, it, it there is a library for WebSockets for version one as well, and it it works very probably the same. It, and there are tools and even free tools, but then it's 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 public information, right? Where you can have a server, you know, that is is you get that unique ID and tell your whatever it is you're telling it to to send to communicate to use that port, right? But then anyone can kind of see the data. Right, that is right. So there are some, some uh, services that allow you to do that kind of stuff, but then in the end, of course, that is um, uh, open to everybody who can actually look at it. And, and that is not um, ideal in certain situations. So right now, let me go ahead and share my screen. And I'm just going ahead and opening up uh, that folder here that it contains more or less the script that I'm working with. And basically, uh, and let me just go ahead and get everything down here. I am including a library called WinSock. And that library allows me to create sockets on my computer. And it is very simple to do. Here is the code that does that. So the code that does that is that I just created a WinSock and I define whether it's a server or a client. So the server is just a computer that is going to be listening for traffic. And a client is uh, as a computer that is going to connect to the server and either send traffic or receive traffic from the server. Now, the basics of WinSocks is that after you create the server, right, um, I would connect it to a specific function that every time there is a connection, either somebody connects or disconnects or whatever event it is, 
this form function is going to be called and I would be able to handle the type of event that happened. So I, I right here, switch on the event and depending on what type of event happened, then I perform some actions, if it was accept, if it was read and so on. So there are certain events that you will have to learn, but the, the basic ones is uh, accept, read, write and disconnect. Those are the things that could happen with a socket. Um, the accept is when somebody accepts a connection. The read is when the, the other computer is ready to read data. So I'm just receiving data. Um, write is when the other computer is ready to write data and so on. And disconnect, of course, when they disconnect. So I just create a socket that is a server. I have my function that is gonna handle all the events. And then I'm gonna bind it to an IP address. So that IP address is gonna be on my local computer. Now, I, in this case, it would be 1.27.0.0.1, right? So that would be your local computer. But um, if you noticed, I'm using a special computer, uh, a special IP. The 0.0.0, .0 is um, a special IP that says this computer in any IP and all the ports. So it is like the universal this computer type of thing. If you use the 1.27.0.0.1, what is gonna happen is that if you want to access this computer through the assigned IP from the router, for example, my router assigned me 10.0.0.1, okay? So that's my IP in my network. If I try to access my computer using this IP, as I set it up like this, then my server is not gonna listen to it. It's gonna ignore it, even though we're talking about the same computer, okay? We, by the way, there's a video, if you search for understanding gateways, uh, right. routers, configuration, we did a video, what is that, like six months ago, roughly, somewhere in there, uh, just right. talking about a lot of this stuff. It had nothing to do with AutoHotKey. It was just more concepts and networking because it's it's one of my big, weak areas. Where <laughs> yeah, it. yeah, it is very difficult to understand. But basically, this IP address and this IP address, they're both referring to the same computer. The only thing is that this is known to the router and this is known to the computer itself, right? But if I bind my socket to this address, Whenever my router tries to send something to me and refers to me with this address, I'm going to ignore it, right? That's what is going to happen. It's going to, it's going to be ignored because I told my socket just to listen when it is being called by this name. And think of it as names. The 127.0.0.1 is a name. And I'm just telling my socket, just answer is if you're called by this name on that port, right? So if I'm being called with a different name, even though I'm being called as well, um, I'm going to ignore it. When you use the 0.0.0, .0 option like this, then it's saying like, it doesn't matter how I'm being called, just, just go ahead and uh, listen to it anyways. It's kind of ironic, but it's yeah. you're binding <laughs> it to a wild card. Like it's exactly. It's, it doesn't matter what I'm called. If I'm being pinged on that particular port, uh -huh. then just answer, okay? So how do I know? And after I bind it to that port, then I call the listen command. And this is the, the, the part. So it is a three-step process. You have to create the socket. You have to tell it where you're going to be listening to, and then you're going to listen to it. If you do not call the listen, you have the socket bind, bound, okay? You have it bound, but it is not listening to anything until you decide when. Um, now, when to... is, this isn't... Oh, because you're using objects already, is that right? Right, like, so this is an object, and this okay. is where I'm just creating my object, but when I'm creating it, I'm passing some uh, information on it so that the object returns a very specific type of object. That's what is going on. Well, I was just I wondering, like, did you, is there a class that helps kind of wrap yeah. it all up? Yeah, that is, that is a class. It is the class called Winsock. And this class, I'm just calling it with some options in it. And the class itself just configures itself depending on whatever I'm passing to. If you guys it. haven't learned classes and this type of advanced objects, that's what this course is above me here. That Right. Uh, this, is the, this is the point of you learning objects because there are very amazing classes out there that if you do not know how to use them, then you're missing out. Right. Because now just by these three lines down here, four with the include up here, 
With these four lines, you just created a server. Now your computer is a server and it's listening to a specific port. Now, how do I know if the port is open? So you have to be, uh, uh, you have to understand that there's a few things that is that are blocking this port. First of all, your your firewall is actually blocking your port. Okay, so Windows has a firewall, and what I'm doing right now, what I did, if you go to your uh, security settings up here and you go to Windows Security, um, you would go to the firewall options. And in the firewall options, I would allow an app through the firewall. And that's what I'm doing. What I usually do is that I allow auto hotkey through um, my firewall so that the auto hotkey apps could connect to the internet directly. So that's the first thing you have to do. If you compile your script, if you compile your script, you would have to put your script's name in here. You have to allow it into the Microsoft firewall. After you do that, if you're using a local computer, you would have to go and go to your uh, router settings. And you would have to allow that port. So I have a section that is called forward rules. And this allows you to forward certain types of, of ports, right? Into gonna, a specific computer. I was right? going to ask you earlier, I'm like, it sounds like port forwarding stuff. Um, yes, that is exactly it. Okay. So you would have to go there and notice uh, if your port is configured or not. Yeah. If it is not configured, it's not going to allow you to, um, you know, uh, work. So basically, if I uh, if I allow a specific port, and I think it was the test here, yeah, that's the one that I'm allowing. So I'm allowing that port to access to be accessed. Extra. Well, I'm I'm just mapping it yeah. from my right. from my right. um, outside. Uh, so my uh, public IP. When it comes from my public IP, if certain... any any traffic that comes from that particular number, right. then it is going to be set to this machine computer IP or whatever. It doesn't matter. So um, in general, what happens is after I mapped all that. Let me show you what happens. Open port. Here we go. I have a tool that allows me to go ahead and check for open ports. And I'm going to allow, I'm, go, I'm just going to check for a specific port in here. And it's going to tell me that it's not uh, open. It is actually closed. So just remember, I allowed my app through my firewall and I configured my router, right? but still is closed because there's nothing listening in there, okay? Now, as soon as I go ahead and run my script, oh. so now that the script is running, now it's listening on port uh, uh, 1337, and whenever somebody tries to connect, my function is going to answer. Now, as I mentioned, remember that we have several events, like the accept, event. When somebody tries to connect, I'm actually answering something. I'm actually accepting the connection, which is something that you manually have to do. You have to grab the event, accept, and allow a connection with the socket that we were just creating here up top. So with this socket, I have to call the accept, and I, I have to pass the address that I got. It is something that is something that happens like that. Now, as soon as I accept, notice that Right now, I'm going to try to make a connection. As that accept is answering, now it is going to tell me that the port is open. And, and basically, my script just replied to that connection. That's what happens. And you can see down here that I'm getting some connection information. So this accept right here is what actually told the other section here that it, my port is open and listen. That's what happens. So if you want to create a server, of course, you will need the Winsock uh, library. It could be functions. It could be a class. I'm using a class. Um, I'm using this one in version two of AutoHotKey. So that's 
why some of the code looked a little bit funny. But um, be before anything works, you have to first, the three steps, you have to create the object, bind it and listen. And even when you listen, you have your function, your function that you uh, uh, defined here, I defined the server and a function, your function must at least uh, answer in a specific event. And that is when it is accepting or reading. And if you have an accept socket like this, then you have to make sure that your script or auto hotkey is allowed through the Windows uh, Defender firewall and that your router or you know your router is configured to forward the port that you're trying to listen to. After you have that, then that means that this particular script is going to be listening for connections from the outside world, mm -hmm. basically a server. And that opens a lot of things because also I could create also a client socket like this. I could create a client socket and um, in another script, not this one, I could create it in a different script. And that client, whenever you connect to it, whenever it connects to the server, right? You can send information to it or you can read information from it or ask information from it. Yeah. Which, uh, as a as a uh, an example of one that we'll probably end up doing here, um, uh, depending you know, in the future, at some point, right? We just got a lot of things we're working on right now. But it, right now, when we do like our live calls, especially the live calls, the free calls, which are streamed to YouTube and here in Zoom, it's really hard for for me. I'm trying to watch both chat things and stuff, right? Well, because everyone here is using Auto Hotkey, we could give people a script. And, and have it actually type. And basically we're creating like a, a messenger or a telegram, whatever you want to call yeah. it, right? Where it's communicating in one spot to us right. and we can see the stuff. We could actually do a lot of crazy stuff with it, right? But, right, of course. Uh, because again, after you have the connection, I just have to wait for the, mom for the moment when I could read information. That means that the client sent me something. Mm -hmm. So just imagine that the client is just a box that you can type in and when you hit enter, it sends that information to the server. That same text just sends it back to the server. And the server, when it receives it, just displays it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can definitely do a chat uh, uh, application. And the server could be polling on YouTube chat or Zoom chat. And whenever there's a new message, it just sends it back to all the clients. Well, it's definitely something yeah. that is doable. What I was saying though is we because everyone's using auto hockey, we give people directly the one you just pretended to start to write. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, hey, it directly goes to our thing and we negate all yeah. the other chatting. Yeah, yeah. Something. You don't have to chat on YouTube or, or Zoom or whatever. You but can to your just... point, it, it would be nice to be able to pull them in from everywhere, right? Right. Um, now the second one, which which just getting back to that, that was pretty complex, right? And you know, you can work through our objects course, which will help you understand classes, or you could maybe, if you really want to go this route, hire us to help set it up and configure some of the stuff, right? That's an option. Right. That's but right. It would be greatly simpler, you know, if you negated the whole everything you just covered and said, "Hey, we can get," because you can pay for a, a shell hooks, uh, not shell hooks, excuse me, um, a web hook. You know, webhook thank you yeah yeah a, a service and then just do api calls to it right and it which is far simpler you know technology wise right it can well, capture it depends because because this here what i was just uh demonstrating is a very generalized server that can accept any type of information now if you what you're looking for is to um listen to a webhook from a different program like Zoom, for example, if you're listening to webhooks, then you don't have to create a whole server just for that, just for listening to that. That's your point. In that case, in right. your point, then I would just hire a service, free service, or you know, however yeah, it or is. Or pay a little bit and have it private. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, to listen to webhooks and um, and just ping that with an API call. That's right. okay too. Yeah. So yeah, in general, I think uh, this is a very interesting world, the world of sending data between computers. That's actually basically what we're doing here with a server and a client. 
But um, if you need more help, don't don't hesitate to ask us. We're going to be just here on the working hours, of course, in the in the in the one hour for the HK members as well. We can just go ahead and answer any questions you have for this type of thing. Yeah. Now, um, the other one that was popping in my head that um, I was thinking maybe we could. Oh, actually, let, let's just just so we break this up into separate videos because that was a nice concise video. I'm going to stop here and we'll start recording again.